I am in the area which became the front line after Operation Market Garden, but the location where I am walking right now became world famous by the miniseries Band of Brothers, due to the fact that the men of Easy Company encountered a SS company moments before the launch of a large offensive, and the men of Easy Company were able to push them back across the river due to the extraordinary leadership of Captain Winters. And trust me, if you have seen Band of Brothers and episode 5 in particular, this is going to look really familiar. When the 101st Airborne Division was stationed on the island, the 506 Parachute Infantry Regiment was assigned the left side of the island. Um, they call it the island since this complete area is surrounded by large waterways. Uh, so the 506 was assigned the left side of the island and Easy Company was assigned the sector between Hetre, which is a couple of miles that way, and the small town of Randwijk where I am right now. And this farmhouse behind me is the farmhouse where Captain Winter set up his headquarters um, and where the beginning take place in episode 5 of Band of Brothers when they bring in the severely wounded um, Ellie and where Captain Winters immediately set up a larger patrol. It was October the 5th, 1944, around 3 a.m. when a small group of Easy Company, I believe consisting out of four men, uh, was patrolling this area towards a windmill that was located behind those trees roughly around there when all of a sudden they stopped because they could hear Germans talk to one another. Joe Lewinsky crawled up the dike to take a closer look, but at that same time a German soldier saw Joe Lewinsky, so he crawled back down, but at that, at that time a couple of German hand grenades were thrown towards them and explode. All the members suffered some injuries, but Ali uh, took the most uh, shrapnel of those uh, hand grenades, and I believe he took 32 pieces of thread mill uh, in total. After that they quickly went back to the uh, headquarters where Captain Winters was located and uh, at that time that is where episode 5 starts of a Band of Brothers and after that Captain Winters quickly set up a larger patrol to take a closer look of the Germans who infiltrated the lines in this area. It was roughly on this location when Captain Winters and the other men of Easy Company were patrolling towards the crossroads when all of a sudden the MG nest which was located um, right over there began firing to the south in that direction and it was a little strange to Captain Winters since no other units were stationed down that road. Little did Captain Winters know at that time was that the SS soldiers on the crossroads infiltrated the lines and set up an MG nest on the crossroads to cause confusion for a larger offensive that the 363rd Volksgrenadier Division would launch on the city of uh, Ophuizen, which is a few kilometers down the road that way. Um, but Captain Winters didn't know that at the time. Anyways, seeing the MG nest um, located on the crossroad, he decided to crawl up the dike to take a look on the other side. So, Captain Winters crossed the dike roughly on this location with the men of Easy Company, and this field in front of me, this is where the assault took place in episode 5 of Band of Brothers. I am walking towards the ditch where Captain Winters um, set up his defensive position but also his starting point of his assault on the Germans who were located behind me. 
Uh, and I must say, as a huge Band of Brothers fan, I feel really pri privileged to live pretty close to this location. Um, yeah, and I, I don't even have words for it. So yeah, I'm close to the ditch. Let's continue this uh, amazing story. So Captain Winters came across the dike in front of me um, with the men of Easy Company and set up a defensive position in this ditch right here. It isn't really a ditch anymore. Uh, that is the only thing time has reclaimed in this area. Um, but, but yeah, anyways, after setting up his defensive position, Captain Winters took a couple of men and followed this ditch in front of me towards the crossroads um, where the MG nest was located. Um, so yeah, I'll, talk, I'll walk towards the uh, actual point where Captain Winters set up his fire base to uh, disable the MG nest. I am on the location where Captain Winters set up his fire base to engage the machine gun nest which was located on top of the dike, um, roughly where that person is sitting right there. Um, and as you can see in the miniseries they make it look like they, the men of Easy Company were nearly on top of the dike themselves, but in reality it was yeah, a bit further, I guess uh, 50 meters or so. But after uh, Captain Winters appointed targets to his men, they opened fire and killed, I believe, five Germans instantly. Two were uh, injured. And after doing so, they retreated to the defensive position right there. And in the meanwhile, uh, mortars opened fire to give them covering fire. But they also killed those two uh, German soldiers and killing seven Germans in one blow. But in the meanwhile, that this was all happening, I can't see it from here. So let me walk to the left. Right, right there is the uh, bridge with a culvert. And three Germans crawled through it and shot a, a rifle grenade towards the defensive posi position. And at that very same time, Dukeman came out of his cover to make sure that, he, that his men were perfectly in cover and at that precise moment the grenade um, hit, killing Dukeman. Um, but those three Germans um, who crawled through the uh, culvert were also shot dead. It was around daylight that Captain Winters realized that the defensive position that they were in wasn't ideal since this was a ditch and the Germans were perfectly covered by the dike. Captain Winters knew that when the Germans would realize this they only had to follow the dike and attack them from the rear, what would have resulted in a Turk shoot for the Germans. So Captain Winters came up with a pretty daring plan and that was a frontal attack on the Germans who would have been located behind me. He made three assault groups. Um, the first one under command of Sergeant Talbot who was running on the fields on my left. The second one in front of me was under command of Captain Winters himself and the third one would have been in that field on my right under command of um, Lieutenant Peacock. One thing they got a little wrong in the miniseries is the way the assault uh, started. In the series, Captain Winters uh, throws a smoke grenade and starts running immediately and the rest of the men uh, start a few seconds later. In 1944, all the men of Easy Company started the assault at the same time. Um, but I saw an interview on YouTube with Dick Winters and he told the interviewer that that day he was so pumped up by adrenaline that that was the reason why he reached the road. Uh, seconds before the other men reach the road. Um, so yeah, ne let's go take a look at the road. And After Captain Winters ran across that field and reached this road first, uh, this is roughly the location where he spotted a German soldier um, who was pretty surprised to see Captain Winters since he was the lookout. And according to the same interview that I saw on YouTube, the German soldier e even smiled at Captain Winters moments before he shot him. Um, after doing so, Captain Winters opened fire on the 
other SS soldiers in this field. Um, and after a couple of clips that he shot in this crowd, the other men of Easy Company uh, reached the road and also started firing on these uh, troops. Uh, it was a real turkey shoot. And in the meanwhile that they were fired upon by Easy Company, there was total chaos and they started to retreat to the ferry crossings, which is roughly um, right there. And at that time that the firing was still going on, a complete SS company came across the dike right there where those cyclists are. Um, but they were also fired upon by the men of Easy Company. After the shootings, that is where episode 5 of Band of Brothers ends. But in 1944 it even continues since the retreating German soldiers were noticed by Captain Winters. Um, so he came up with a quick plan and that was to cut them off at the ferry crossings. So he set up a fireway maneuver towards those uh, factories in the distance. But halfway across the fields they came under fire of the retreating Germans and they uh, Captain Winters called it off for a day and they retreated to this uh, crossroads. Once they reached this crossroad where I am standing right now, they came under artillery fire from across the river and for some reason the Germans had perfectly zeroed in this, this crossroad. Um, I don't really know why. At that point even 18 men of Easy Company got injured due to the art uh, artillery fire. Um, so yeah, that is, that is where this uh, amazing story ends um, in Hetere where I am standing right now. This is the monument that commemorates what Easy Company has done in this field behind it. And it is pretty remarkable if you consider the situation where they were in, not knowing the strength of the Germans who were just across the road in this field behind it. Um, so yeah, I think it is a real heroic action that was done by Easy Company in this field. And this one thing I need to mention is that this isn't the original monument. This one was revealed in 2004, um, but the original one was somehow hit by a car in 2011. And in that same year, this one was uh, placed in the same location where the original one was uh, standing. I hope you find it an interesting story that I told you about the heroic assault done by the men of Easy Company and the extraordinary leadership of Captain Winters. This being said, um, have a good day and I hope you'll join me on my next travel to history. See you later.